Oh, hey friends. Oh my gosh, look where we are. Behind the scenes of our next filming of Coffee with Kim. I'm so excited you're here. And if you thought the previous seasons were great, just wait. You're not gonna believe who's stopping by for coffee. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. We've all heard about and hopefully we've all seen the movie Jesus Revolution. The true story of a national spiritual awakening in the early 1970s and its beginnings within a community of teenage hippies in Southern California. It's certainly a movie of great hope for such a time as this in our world. So while we know about the movie, today we have the rare and incredible privilege to meet the man behind the movie. Hello everyone and welcome to Coffee, conversations of friends of faith to encourage and equip. I'm Kim Crable, so delighted to be here with you today. So today we have joining us John Irwin, the faith-based filmmaker who set a movie industry record when this film, Jesus Revolution, recorded an A-plus cinema score, making him the first director ever to receive four perfect scores. What is his secret? From where did this passion come? And what is his word of encouragement to each of us today? Join us right after this short break and meet the man behind these inspiring faith-based movies, John Irwin. Kim Crable knows all about hidden shame and regret. From the time she experienced a life-altering trauma at age four, Kim became an expert in hiding her hurt and confusion. The trick she discovered was to sing a little louder in church and to smile a little wider with friends. In her transparent story, Burdens to Blessings, Kim invites you along the journey from shame and sadness towards healing and hope. In the process, you'll encounter the upside down truth that God uses you because of your hurt and uncertainty. Order your copy of Burdens to Blessings right away at amazon.com or simply go to www.kimcrable.org and click on the shop button. Discover the confidence and courage to be you again and discover the power of your story. Along the way, you'll help other hurting people change their burdens to blessings. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee. Oh, my goodness, can you believe who we have with us today? John Irwin. John, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. What an honor it is just uh, to meet you. You know, I know your mom and dad really well and just love them dearly. And so, um, so thank you. I don't know if they pulled some strings for me to be able to have this interview, but whatever it takes. Oh, no, so I was happy, happy to do it. Happy to do it. <laughs> yeah. My mom, yeah, my, my mom uh, uh, loves you, of course, and, and, uh, and, and, and I love them. My dad bought me a camera. Uh, when I was 16 years old with money, frankly, he did not have. And that started this whole journey yeah. of filmmaking. And uh, he said, dream bold, dream big, dream the impossible. And, uh, and they've been, uh, uh, they've been our biggest fans ever since, so I'm grateful for them. Oh my gosh. Well, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask how you got started. But, but before that, I wanted just to congratulate you on this, um, the first director to ever receive four perfect scores on, with this last movie with a cinema score. That's amazing. Well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things where a cinema score is the, is the grade an audience gives to a movie. And, yes. uh, an A plus is a very rare grade, and uh, so I'm just grateful to the audience. And our, our whole, you know, um, uh, you know, drive is to entertain the audience and to give them an incredible experience. And to, um, I, I just love hearing them laugh and cry, and, and but then also being able to tell a meaningful story. And I think the gospel can change your life. And so, so yeah, I was grateful that uh, uh, that that happened, and and it's nice to to be. Uh, you know, just uh, to, to accomplish something that's, that's specific to entertaining an audience, and uh, and and I'm glad they love. Uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that uh, 
the audience that we know and love the, the, the most loves loves the movie. Well, they're so meaningful, you know, and they, they touch people's hearts and they drive them you know, more toward their relationship with, with Christ, which is really, I think, the underlining theme of everything that you do. Uh, but let mm -hmm. me just ask you back up just a little bit. You know, the way I introduced you, of course, was, you know, of course we know about the movie and the movies that you've done and how much we love those. But we wanted to get a, kind of a glimpse of the man behind the movies and a little bit more about you. For me, I just think Think the more I know about the people who are doing something, the more it draws yeah. me to do whatever, you know, see what they're doing. So, you know, you started answering this question, so let's just kind of finish it up a little bit. How did you get started? When did you know that you were interested in media? Well, you know, the, the movie we just did, Jesus Revolution, is, is, you know, one of the great themes in the story is God using flawed, ordinary, yeah. you know, people to do extraordinary things together. And I'm certainly... Uh, 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 evidence of that as well. I'm, I'm a mess. Uh, but, and, and, and you couldn't have uh, uh, been raised uh, further from Hollywood than uh, Birmingham, Alabama, where, where I was raised. And uh, so born in the deep south, if the, if, the, if the Bible Belt had a buckle, it would be Birmingham, you know. And, uh, and my, my parents are wonderful and in church, you know, from the, basically the day I was born. And, uh, but I, I, you know, I had a curious mind. I had to do uh, kindergarten twice because I was an ADHD disturbance to the class. It was everybody else's grades, not, not mine. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so uh, I began to homeschool. And so when I was 15 years old, um, uh, a, I was interning for a cameraman uh, for my church. And, and a, uh, another cameraman got sick on an ESPN football game for the University of Alabama about three hours before the kickoff. And so my my mentor called me and said, John, get over here right now. Don't tell anybody you've never done this before. Don't tell anyone how old you are, but they're desperate. I told him I knew a guy. And so come over here and you can run camera for ESPN. And so my dad drove me over to the stadium and um, and uh, dropped me dropped me off like four blocks away because I didn't want anyone to know I couldn't drive. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I ran this big camera uh, for, for ESPN and I had the time of my life. It was just that moment where there was life before that moment and life after that moment, uh, mm -hmm. vocationally, and mm -hmm. and I just fell in love. And it was like joining the circus, and I never looked back. And uh, a crewing agent called me the next week because they looked at the list and said, um, and said, are you a freelance camera operator? And I honestly didn't know if that was one job or three jobs. So I just said, yes, I do that. That's what I do. And uh, and so I did a game at Auburn and, and, and freelanced uh, uh, for ESPN for years after that. And, and, uh, and my brother quickly joined. Uh, my brother Andy, he's older, and and uh, and then the next year, my dad bought me that camera, that dream bold, dream big, dream the impossible. Helped us get a loan for ten thousand dollars, which you probably shouldn't do for two teenagers, and uh, but uh, to buy some editing equipment, wow. and uh, and we just started doing all kinds of things: videos for our church, weddings, we videotaped surgeries. I mean, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And uh, one thing led to another. But you know, the principle is, I think, uh, I love this book outliers that um, mm -hmm. talks about the 10,000 hour rule that anybody who's achieved success has spent 10,000 hours, you know, trying to really master their craft. And I think we so often overestimate what we can do in the short term, but we really underestimate what we can do in the long term if we just practice and we just keep trying and we keep improving um, and we keep learning. And uh, Success is long obedience in the same direction, and so we just we did a bunch of stuff, and and then uh, the music artist Michael W. Smith, um, and quickly followed by Amy Grant and others, uh, uh, still for reasons I don't understand, uh, let us do a music video for them, and uh, and we loved it, mm -hmm. and um, and, uh, and and we were we just did as many of them as we could, and and uh, it was a wonderful season of honing our craft, and. Um, and then I and we won uh, music video of the year three years in a row, and uh, and then we uh, I went to direct second unit on a Christian movie called Courageous, and a church called Sherwood in, in Southern Georgia was making that movie. Of course. And uh, they were making it with primarily church volunteers. The yes. the movie Fireproof before that, Facing the Giants before that. Yes. Well, this one had some action sequences involving cars, and. Uh, Here's something you that these two things are great. You know, a church making movies with volunteers and action sequences involving cars. You just never want to combine things. Somebody <laughs> will get run over. And so 
I was brought in to to do the action sequence and stunt work and help them with a camera they wanted to uh, film on called the Red One, and and uh, and it was on that set that Alex, you know, Southern Baptist as he is, yes, uh, you know, went, went straight for it and just said, uh, John, we've looked at all your work and and we got a question like, what's your purpose and the purpose of your work? Like, why do you do what you do? Yes. Uh, and you know, I couldn't answer it. I couldn't answer the question. And not only could I not answer it, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, I, it was a moment in my life where my career met a life's calling. And I fused what I believed with what I had, had gotten really good at doing. And, uh, you know, I think vocationally, you'll never be happier than if you, if, if whatever it is you're doing, you're doing uh, for a cause bigger than you are and for God's glory instead of your own. And yes. uh, and that started a journey of making movies. What did Mike Tyson say? Every boxer has a plan until he gets in the ring, gets punched in the face, yes. you know? And uh, and so we jumped in and started uh, raising money for our own films and uh, and uh, and started making them. And 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 uh, the, finally, we got to the movie I Can Only Imagine. It just wildly exceeded all of our yes. um, expectations and, and hopes and dreams. And uh, the goal is I love this verse in Acts where Paul says of David that he served the purposes of God in his generation. And the gospel never changes, God never changes, but you know, our generation does. And, and, and you have to sit in the middle of those things and say, what's the best way that I can get, you know, what never changes to what is constantly changing. And I just think mass entertainment um, is a wonderful way to do that. And not many people know this, but uh, entertainment is America's second largest export. And anything that becomes a hit in America goes all over the world, uh, just like Jesus Revolution is, is, is going right now. It's, it's launching uh, theatrically in the UK and, and will in Latin America here soon, all, only because it was popular uh, in America. And so the gospel can glo uh, go on you know, global autopilot yes. uh, if we can make these things successful in the US. And so that's the, that's the ambition of, of what we're called to do. Well, it's, it's just, you know, with, with everything that you just said, there has to have been some times, John, where you just thought, oh, this is bigger than what I expected. This is not, and, and not the grand way that you're talking about. So what I'm trying to ask you is, have you ever gotten to a point where you just said, oh, this is enough. I just, I'm, I'm not even interested anymore. Or, or you were so discouraged in a moment. And I'm asking you this based on, you know, our audience who, they have dreams. Yeah. And, you know, you always come against more, more than just a bunch in the road sometimes. Sometimes it's like a, a, a concrete wall before you. Have you ever gotten to that place? And, and if you did, yeah, that's what, a great question. what did you do? Um, constantly, <laughs> constantly. I tell people, you know, entertainment is a, um, it's one of the most competitive industries on earth. Yes. Um, it's, it's a very dark place mm -hmm. um, uh, that we want to shine a light in. It's hard work. It's a, it's a skill. It's like, it's more, more like the NFL than uh, than another business, and uh, and and it's hard, you know. Making making movies is hard, and I think uh, whether it was, um, you know, uh, you know, I think the, the one the disappointment. There's so there's lots of disappointments. There's lots of moments that you want to give up, um, you know. And what I what I what I've learned is that, um, you know, it's going to take longer than you think. It's you know, my my dad uh, told me when he bought me that camera. He says if you really love this. Give 20 years of your life to it because that's how long it takes, you know, and that's uncommon advice. And oddly enough, it was 20 years to the year of him telling me that to the breakout hit of I Can Only Imagine. Uh, now, we had some other, we did a lot of other things. We had a career, you know, in the middle, but it really does take a lot of time and, um, and, and it's worth it. I think with um, Jesus Revolution, you know, that's a movie that I, that I, I bought that Time Magazine cover story. Yes. Uh, uh, in 2015, the 1971 time, it bought it on eBay, was yes. blown away by it, mm -hmm. got to know Greg Laurie, wanted to do a movie, so we tried to make it for, uh, you know, eight years, and, and, um, and, you know, we almost had it made, and probably one of the more disappointing uh, moments in my career was, after I can only imagine, we had a film called I Still Believe, out in theaters, is number one movie in America when it opened on Friday night, but five days later, uh, all theaters worldwide, yeah. as well as the rest of society, was uh, was closed yeah. uh, because of COVID, and uh, you know we had no way of knowing that that was going to happen. 
And so it was a very disappointing uh, turn of events. Uh, yes. And uh, it, it was hard. Uh, and it was, there was so much uh, unknown. Well, we also had two films in pre-production, American Underdog and Jesus Revolution. Andy and I were directing American Underdog, and my great uh, uh, friend and collaborator and co-writer, John Gunn, was directing Jesus Revolution at the time. Um, and, you know, the plug was pulled on both of them. And we had to wait until, um, you know, we were able to make movies again, so we were able to make American Underdog first. But all the COVID restrictions had to ease to be able to make Jesus Revolution because we needed so many people together, wow. um, you know, because it's about a revival. Right. In American Underdog, all the crowds are fake. Every crowd because of COVID, every crowd member, oh. even ones that are close. We had, to, we had to bring each audience member in for that movie and scan them with nine cameras as they cheered oh. and mat them in because of the restrictions. Um, so because we had to wait longer on Jesus Revolution, I got to step back in and co-direct it. And, and, and uh, Kelsey Grammer became available and Jonathan Rumi became available. And then to see that the film came out right when it did. Yes. Um, you know, I've done many interviews where I'm like, we didn't plan February to be the, the Jesus month in entertainment with Dallas Jenkins show, The Chosen, with Super Bowl commercials uh, and, and, with the, and, and with our movie and, and a revival at Asbury College and many other places in between. My point is I've never been so aware that God's timing is perfect. Right. And sometimes you'll face these disappointments in life that you don't understand. That's because God's got something better if you're just willing to wait on it. And if you're just willing to, um, you know, to, to endure, uh, you know, and as the Bible says, just not lose heart, you know, in yes. due season we'll reap. Right. If we don't lose heart. And uh, and so if there's anything that I would say is just keep going. If if God, if you really feel like you're doing something that you're called to do, um, just keep going. And I think there there is is is, is much fewer uh, failure uh, failures in life than there is people that just give up too early. Yes. And sometimes, you know, that breakthrough could be right around the corner. Yes. But if you give up, you'll never get there. And uh, and so I think uh, I think I'm 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 reminded that the seven uh, eight years to, to the screen for this movie was worth it. And uh, and the bumps along the way that were disappointing at the time make perfect sense now when we see what what God was up to. Absolutely. I read where you said that the Jesus Revolution was the perfect timing, the perfect movie for such a time as this. Will you explain to us what you mean about that? Well, when I first, um, you know, bought the magazine on eBay and read about it, and it was just, it was this story of, you know, 1971 cover story of Time magazine uh, was this psychedelic portrait of Jesus, and it just said the Jesus Revolution. And it was this story of a sweeping spiritual awakening uh, that was that was really um, uh, st the started in California amongst the hippies and it had spread all over the country. Well, five years before that article uh, and that cover, there was another cover of Time, and it was the first cover of Time magazine that had no picture. It was just a black background, red text, very ominous, and it just said, "Is God dead?" And I and I was like, "What in the world happened between these two magazine covers?" And the more I studied it the more um, I, it felt like, man, this feels like now. It doesn't feel like I'm reading about, uh, you know, the 60s or late 60s and early 70s. It feels like I'm reading about today. And I remember doing, uh, you know, when I met Greg and Kathy Laurie and, and, uh, and so many people that lived the Jesus Revolution, um, you know, the word desperate came up a lot. Mm. And it was a very divided time. And, uh, man, they were just searching for answers. And, you know, what do they say when your pain outweighs your fear, change can begin. And I think we're back in that moment of desperation again. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we're all saying, like, where are our answers? There's fascinating. There's a sudden increase in spiritual curiosity, yes. especially amongst Gen Z. Wall Street Journal just wrote a report on it. And, um, and I just think it's because, you know, of the, of the last three years that we've had, and so I just feel like if God did it once, he can do it again. And, um, and we're in another moment where we need another Jesus revolution today. And I think we're primed for one. And I think what that generation discovered is, is, is uh, Jesus was where the answers really were. And, uh, and that's true then and it's true today. And so my hope is that when people see the film, um, and, and, and I hope that 
enjoy it. I, we we want to entertain first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But after watching it, you know, I, I hope instantly they start to think, okay, how can this happen again today? Yeah, absolutely, and it is. It's just wonderful. And uh, your parents were so kind to invite us up to do uh, the red carpet. My husband and I in, in in Tennessee, and so we were there and we watched it. It was great. And someone mentioned uh, maybe your mom. Someone mentioned Woodlawn. You have to go watch Woodlawn. So we we go home and of course we watch it the next day. And I'm just you know fascinated by it. Loved loved it. Loved the storyline. But at the end, I'm looking at the credits and I said, oh my gosh, look, Lee, the guy that was the chaplain that was on the cane, he went on to run marathons. And oh my gosh, he turned out to be a senator. And Lee said, honey, uh, that's Hank. That's the dad. It was like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah, he went crazy. yeah, it was. So tell us about that. I, I just love the way, yeah, well, the, the honoring of your family like that. Well, Woodlawn uh, is a story that, that our, uh, our dad told us um, you know, often, uh, you know, it was like a bedtime story. He was the chaplain of Woodlawn High School. Yeah. And uh, there was an evangelist named Wales Goble that he worked with and for. And uh, Wales did the initial meeting uh, at, at Woodlawn, and then my dad was the chaplain. Um, in the movie version, those two uh, are combined into the character that Sean Astin plays. And, and, so, um, and so one of the interesting connections with Jesus Revolution is... Uh, that's that movie is where I discovered that magazine because, mm -hmm. you know, I think when you when you make a film, you have to make it as honest as possible, and you have to almost be like a reporter. And I was I'd heard the story since I was a kid because my dad told it to me. But I'm like, um, the, the context of the movie Woodlawn is that Woodlawn High School in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, in 1973 was going to close because of violence from uh, integration and and just a, an extreme amount of racial tension, and it was a revival that started on the football team uh, that uh, rescued the school and, uh, and led to the biggest game ever played in, in Alabama, the high school game, and the first um, uh, black superstar athlete, Tony Nathan, uh, uh, that was heavily recruited by Bear Bryant yes. and played at the University of Alabama. It was portrayed by John Voight in the film. And as a filmmaker, of course I trust my dad and listen to the story we did all this research, but I was like, could this have really happened? An entire high school um, transformed through a revival. And that's where I discovered the Jesus Revolution magazine while doing that research. Because not only was it happening in Birmingham, Alabama, it was literally happening uh, all, all over um, America. And what was happening in Birmingham was actually an outpouring of what happened at Asbury College um, yes. in that very auditorium that it happened again uh, in this February. Uh, and, and people from there went all, all, you know, all over the country and, and, uh, and really shook the Southeast. And, and so, uh, you know, my dad was, uh, you know, uh, it was so crazy when we cast Sean Astin and, and he's playing our own father in a movie that we're directing. It was pretty special. And I love that, that story. And they say a filmmaker finds their story and tells it over and over again. That's when we found the power of true stories. Yeah. And, uh, and, we, and we've done nothing ever except that ever since and I just think that there's power to stories that are true because you're like you know if it happened to them it can happen to me and uh if their lives can be changed then maybe mine can too well and I think what you you've hit a secret there I think that's so true and I remember leaving Jesus Revolution I said had, if I did not know that that had truly happened I'd go oh well that is just too much to believe I mean you really you know yeah. you, you have to know that it happened, which actually kind of brings you back to, to the truth of the gospel. It's like, it sounds way too outlandish unless you know that it's true. So, John, we have, uh, we have to take a really quick break and then we're going to come back. And I want to have, uh, just ask you one, one final question. And I just can't thank you enough for spending this time with me. I feel like I've learned so much. Well, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. But give us just a second and we'll be right back. The most amazing gift one could ever receive is knowing how deeply we are loved by God. Yet it's the very thing we sometimes struggle with and fail to comprehend. To learn more, Kim Crable will send you this devotional treasure titled Cherished. These pages contain a daily dose of His infinite love for you. The 365 daily readings will help you take your eyes off the day's demands and focus on the God who loves you more than you can ever imagine. God will show us all how active and personal He can be in life as He brings this courage to our lives. 
we will all discover the joy of recognizing and responding to daily opportunities to encourage and uplift others. To get a copy rushed to you right away, simply go to Amazon.com or directly to Kim's website at www.kimcrable.org. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee. I promised you a great program, and it has been. I was just thinking about the things that I've learned uh, about John and, and how he makes things happen and just the things that go through his mind. And one of the things I wanted to remind you of that John keeps saying is that, you know, things don't happen overnight. It takes a while. But John, when I was introducing you, I said one, one of the things I wanted to do was to present, you know, the man behind the movie. So I think about all these incredible movies that you've chosen and the hard work that you do and you pour yourself into. I just want to ask you, how has that affected you as a man? How has that grown you? How has that helped you with your faith? What, what has it done to the man behind the movies? Yeah, thanks for asking that question. Um, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, one of the great themes in Jesus' revolution is that, uh, that God can use anybody that says yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think so many of us think that we're either unqualified or disqualified or, or we, you know, we struggle with this or that, we're not talented enough, that we stay on the sidelines. And um, for me, you know, I think it, the idea is that God can use you and you have a gift. And, um, you know, if you step out in faith and begin to use your gift uh, for God's glory and you let him change you slowly, incrementally, um, uh, but, but you don't let your own insecurities, uh, you know, uh, uh, dictate whether you use your gifts or not, you know. Um, life becomes a great adventure. Um, it's not always easy, um, but it becomes a great adventure. And, and uh, I would just say that one of the things that I hope people take from Jesus' revolution is we all have a part in God's story. We all have a gift. We all have a purpose. We all have a destiny. And if you'll just begin to think of like, um, you know, it's like Dallas Jenkins talks about the chosen with five loaves and two fish. Like, what do you have in your hand? I have a camera, you know? Yes. We all have something. Yes. And, uh, and, we, and, and we can all be active participants yes. in getting the gospel to the world, whether that's next door or, you know, a, a continent away. Uh, we all have a role to play. And, I think the, the the key is just to um, is to is to just just go further than others go in learning how to do something and using it for God's glory uh, instead of your own. And uh, and I hope that everyone can find that thing because when you do uh, vocationally, there, there's nothing better yeah. than when you when you when you knit what you love to do with 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 getting the gospel around the world and serving God with it. Uh, there's nothing better vocationally. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just encourage everyone to find that thing. Well, thank you so much. And I thank you for that answer because I believe that that speaks to everyone in our world today. Um, just like Jesus Revolution, is that we, we all do have our part and we don't need to compare, compete. It's just do what is before you to do. Pick up what's around you mm -hmm. and do what you can to serve. John Irwin, I just admire you so much. Thank you for, for touching our world with these incredible stories that are truly bringing uh, us back to Christ front and center. Thank you for what you're doing, and we'll be praying you forward as you move ahead with all your other projects. Thank you so much for joining us.